One of GPT AI Power's most popular features is the ChatGPT chatbot feature. This is great for lead generation, closing clients, reducing bounce rates, and many more important elements. There are two ways to do this. We can create a chatbot shortcode or a chatbot widget. First, I'll show you how to implement GPT AI Power shortcode function. This allows you to use a specific shortcode that you may copy paste to any post or page that you'd like. This will place a chat box window on the pages with the shortcode, where setting it up as a widget will add a chat pop-up across your entire site. Let's get started. On the shortcode tab of ChatGPT, you'll see a real-time preview of your chatbot. Similar to the content writer, on the right side you'll see all of your edit options. For this example, let's set up a chatbot for my marketing agency's website. I'm going to set up a chatbot using English and a professional tone. This next toggle, Act As, has many preset roles that you may find helpful for your website. I run a social media marketing agency, so I'm going to have this chatbot act as a digital marketing agency. If you can't find your profession or language here, don't worry. You can select None and add your profession or language in additional context field. Next, the Style section allows you to edit what the chatbot window itself looks like. This is in real time, so you can visualize what the end result will look like. I'd like to increase the font a bit and make the box white. I now need to change the text color. Let's go with yellow. And now I'm going to make the send button a blue color. Now I'd like my chatbot to look as if it's a real personal assistant, so I'm going to toggle Use Avatars and upload a headshot. Under Parameters, you'll be able to choose which OpenAI model you want to use. I'm going to keep it on DaVinci for API usage purposes. One thing to note here is GPT-4 is waitlisted. So even if you have access to GPT-4 on ChatGPT, you may need to request access to the API itself. Keep this in mind if you decide you want to use the GPT-4 API here. Since this website will only be visited by leads for my services, I should need moderation, but I don't see a reason not to enable it, just in case. Next we have voice input. This will enable your visitors to send the chatbot voice messages. Let's enable this and leave the color scheme default. Next we have custom text. Here we will name our chatbot. I'm going to give it a name that will match its avatar. And now instead of saying AI thinking, I'm going to change this to say Katie's typing. I'm going to leave the rest of these as default. However, you're able to customize your placeholder, welcome message, and no answer message, which pops up when the chatbot doesn't have an answer to the request. You can also add a footer, which I'm going to add powered by GPT AI Power. Next is the context section. These are some of the more important selections as well. If you want the chatbot to remember the conversation while running, toggle yes. For example, when on, it will be able to refer back to the chat log for that current session. Next, you choose how many messages back you want it to store in its memory. The default is 10. In this scenario, I don't need my chatbot to be aware of the individual users, so I'm going to leave this setting off. Please note that the user aware feature works only for registered users of your website. Below that is content aware. This is really important as it decides if your chatbot will know your website's content. There are two options here. It can either pull information from your post's excerpts or it can use embeddings. Excerpts are the easiest option. If you choose excerpts, make sure that your posts actually have well-written summaries on your posts or else the chatbot won't be able to pull any data. Now what's an excerpt? An excerpt is an optional text associated to a post. Most of the time, it's used as the post summary. If excerpts are empty, WordPress automatically creates an excerpt using the first 55 words of your posts. And for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to use embeddings. This is the most powerful and popular method, and it uses pinecone. As you can see, we can't actually toggle them right now as it's grayed out. This is because we have to activate the cron job for embeddings first. Let's go do that. In the Settings tab under Embeddings, you'll see the cron job configuration code specific to your website. Copy and paste that into your server's cron jobs. I'm adding my cron job via cPanel. I find this the easiest method to add cron jobs. All you need to do is copy paste the cron job here. If you need a more in-depth guide on all of the different ways you can add cron jobs to your server, click the link in the description. This is what mine looks like on this server. Alright. Now that the cron job is activated, we just have to finish preparing Pinecone. 
Once you sign up for Pinecone, it might waitlist you due to high demand. Personally, I found that if you click Upgrade Plan, it'll charge you $0 but allow you to skip the waitlist. Now if you do this, remember to cancel your subscription you might start. Once you have a Pinecone account, create an index on Pinecone. Ensure your dimension is set to 1536. Now set your metric to cosine. Click Create Index. Lastly, we need to paste our Pinecone API key and index into the Embeddings tab on GPT AI Power. Now that we've done this, I'm going to enable Instant Embed. This does not require a cron job to run. With this enabled, you'll only have to select the content you want embedded and click Instant Embed. For example, watch me navigate to my posts page here, and at the top, you can see the Instant Embedding option. Let's select the specific posts we'd like to embed and click Instant Embedding. As you see here, it'll pop up a queue window that'll quickly show you the progress as it indexes these posts and pages. Now the other option here is to use cron indexing. If you're following this video, it's likely you've already acted your cron job for embeddings. So let's use this method. With cron indexing, GPT AI Power's Index Builder will monitor your website's content based on the cron job settings and update your index automatically. I'm going to have it automatically index all of my posts and pages. Now click Save. You're able to monitor your index content under the Index Builder tab. As you see here, it lists the titles of the posts it's indexed and embedded, as well as the tokens spent, estimated costs, source, which is posts for these examples, their status, and then you have the ability to re-index them or delete them. Re-indexing them is an important option anytime you update your pages. All right, now that the Pinecone and cron job for cron indexing embeddings is activated, let's toggle on embeddings. I recommend you keep it set to embeddings plus completion. This allows for it to output much better results. Lastly, you can toggle additional context. This is information you want your bot to remember for all chat sessions. I'm going to enter a few details so it performs best for the roles I need. This could be telling it who it'll be role playing, as well as giving it instruction to limit off topic conversation. That's important so you don't have your OpenAI API usage ran up because of chats that aren't relevant. Next is the logs section. Here you can toggle if you want your chat logs to be saved. If you toggle save chat logs, which we will be here, you'll likely also need to toggle display notice. Depending on your location, this is going to be required due to privacy regulation. We'll add a short generic notice that'll display on the start of the chat. Now we're going to be at the token handling section. Here we'll set the limits for users. It's split between registered and non-registered users. You can also set limits based on roles such as administrator, editor, etc. I'm going to limit guests or non-registered visitors to 1,000 and registered users to 2,000. We'll add a notice that tells the visitor they've reached their chat limit along with the support email that they may reach out to for further help. I want users to be able to use this support often but not to spam it, so I'm going to set this limit to reset each day. Alright, we've successfully chosen all of the relevant settings. It's now time that we save our chatbot. Since this was in the form of shortcode, all we must do is highlight the code and paste it into a new page or post. Let's test it out to make sure it works. Great, we did it. Now let's take a look at how to use the chatbot as a widget. This is great if you want to make a website-wide chat box. You've probably seen many of your favorite websites with support chats in the bottom right or bottom left of their website. It's just like that. Let's get started. If you want the chatbot widget to be on your entire website, you can activate your widget via the widget window. This enables a site-wide chatbot widget. You'll set it up exactly as we did with the shortcode. But let's say that you want to set up your chatbot as a widget and only on the home page. To do this, you'll start under the chatbots tab. Now click Create New Bot. This is going to open up a window that looks very familiar to how we set up the shortcodes. We'll change our chatbot and select Widget. This then asks us where we want to display the chatbot at. I'm going to type in my homepage's page ID, 5558, and select bottom right. 
Next, we'll navigate through the same settings we just followed to set up our short code. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch through it a second time. Once you've added all of the settings you'd like, click Save. If this was implemented correctly, you should now see the chatbot pop up on your website. Let's go check out the home page. All right, here's the home page I wanted to add it to. And it looks like it works great. Awesome. One more really important factor for smooth operating with your chatbot is analyzing your chat logs. To do this, navigate to the Logs tab. In this example, you'll see the test chat box we just ran on the home page. It shows the session and date, messages between the user and the AI, where the chat took place, the source of the chat, token slash estimated cost, the user's IP address, and also if the chat passed its moderation screen. On the far right, you'll even see a view button. When you click this, it'll expand the entire chat log for that session. This comes in handy if you need to troubleshoot. For example, if a user asked a question that should be able to be answered, but yet the chatbot couldn't answer it, you'll find out why here. To further explain, look at this last question we asked our chatbot. When you click Details, it'll actually show you the exact prompt and response sent to and from the API. Hopefully by now you have your GPT AI powered chatbot fully set up on your website. We hope this tutorial has been very helpful in your journey. If you have any more questions about setting up or maintaining your GPT AI powered chat GPT chatbot, feel free to comment below. Our goal is to make this as seamless as possible for anyone. Thanks for watching.